Hello everybody, my name is Dwayne Massey and welcome back to my YouTube channel and my YouTube video entitled Team Cohesion Part 1. Lecture material that go along with this video can be found on my website www.masseyinstitute.com If you want to stop this video at this point and download these materials, please do so. Go to the website, select the lecture material tab, select the title of this video, and print out the associated material. You can then follow along on it as the video progresses. You may restart the video when you are ready to do so. Let's go ahead and get started. As with most of the topics covered in these videos, the information provided here related to team cohesion and team development can be applied to groups and organizations beyond the realm of sports. All of us can cite examples of very talented teams that did not live up to their potential. During this video, I'm going to share with you several quotes pertinent to our discussion. The first one is, it isn't necessarily talent on the team that makes it great, but how that talent is blended. Newt Rockney, the legendary football coach at Notre Dame, when asked the secret of his success, stated, I am successful because I play my best 11, not my 11 best. Think about that a minute. It's actually very profound. What did Rockney mean? What Rockney is saying here is, I don't play my 11 best athletes. I play those athletes who best fit into the mix, who bring something special to the table who complement each other and make each other better. How many of you have ever known a player, and you may not have always been able to put your finger on it, but when they were in the game, the team or the unit just functioned better? That is what I think Coach Rockney meant by that quote. We often see talented teams perform poorly, failing, failing to use the resources of their individual members where other teams with less talent succeed. Michael Jordan once said, Talent wins games, but teamwork wins championships. Jordan was a great individual player early in his career, but it was not until he made a conscious effort to involve his teammates more in the games that the Bulls began to win championships. I credit Phil Jackson for this change in approach and think it demonstrates what a great coach he was. Pat Riley, the great coach of the Los Angeles Lakers and arch rival of my beloved Celtics, stated, Teamwork is the essence of life. If there's one thing on which I'm an authority, it's how to blend the talents and strengths of individuals into a force that becomes greater than the sum of its parts. My driving belief is this, great teamwork is the only way to reach our ultimate moments, to create the breakthroughs that define our careers, to fulfill our lives with a sense of lasting significance. However, teamwork isn't simple. In fact, it can be a frustrating, elusive commodity. That's why there are so many bad teams out there stuck in neutral or going downhill. Teamwork doesn't, ma doesn't appear magically just because someone mouths the words. It doesn't thrive just because of the presence of talent or ambition. It doesn't flourish simply because a team has tasted success. Think about it a minute. What has a tendency to stand the test of time? Few of us will be remembered for our accomplishments much beyond our lifetime. What has the tendency to stand the test of time are cultural accomplishments, are the accomplishments of the civilization. At the end of the day, it is the civilization's accomplishments that really matter. It is the civilization's accomplishments that are remembered, not the individual's accomplishments. It's the same in sports. No matter how accomplished an individual's athletic career in their respective sport, if the athlete does not win a championship, their athletic career is seen as lacking or incomplete in some way. For all intents and purposes, what is the civilization? It is the team. In life as in sports, it's the team that matters. If you were to poll a group of coaches, achieving and maintaining group cohesion is probably their foremost concern. It is the thing that keeps them up at night. It is probably the thing they stress and agonize over the most. One of the most foremost examples of team unity is the 1979 Pittsburgh Pirates. Willie Stargell was a Hall of Fame baseball player who spent his entire career with the Pittsburgh Pirates organization. 
He hit 432 home runs, which is currently ranked 32nd on the all-time list in Major League Baseball history. When the Pirates made their pennant and World Series run in 1979, Stargell was in the latter portions of his career. He was 37 years old at the time and was affectionately called Pops by his often much younger teammates. Prior to the 1979 season, the Pirates were picked to win their division and were a favorite to win the World Series. However, the Pirates started out slowly. Early in the season, they struggled and only had a 500 record as the season progressed. During a rain delay of one of the Pirates' games, the maintenance crew was rolling out the tarp to keep the field dry. As this was being done, the song We Are Family by Sister Sledge, which was popular on the radio at the time, was played on the loudspeaker. As this occurred, Stargell had an epiphany. He went to the Pirates' manager and organization and encouraged them to begin playing the song in the locker room. At the same time, he began playing up the family theme of the song with the team. And before long, the song was not only being played in the locker room, but also before and after games and during the seventh inning stretch. The title of the song was painted on the top of the Pirates' dugout. In short order, the Pirates began to win games and climb up the rankings in their division. The song became associated with the Pirates, and before long, the song was being played everywhere. It became a cultural phenomenon and people who were not usually baseball fans began to follow and root for the Pirates. The Pirates went on to win the pennant and the World Series. In the World Series, the Pirates had to come back from a one to three game deficit to win the championship. Stargell's personality, the family environment he cultivated, and the spirit of camaraderie he nurtured propelled the Pirates to a championship. Willie Stargell is one of the greatest examples of leadership in sports history. Every team is a group, but not every group is a team. So how does a group become a team? We have a tendency to think that group development is this large, unfathomable, incomprehensible process. But actually, it is made up of distinct and identifiable stages at which a coach, leader, supervisor, or other significant individual can intervene to make it more likely a team culture will be developed. In our next video, we will scrutinize the team formation process and the stages involved in that journey. In conclusion, as always, I hope something we said today was useful and had some relevance to you. Be on the lookout for my next video, which I hope to post in the relatively near future. Again, be sure to check out my webpage, www.masseyinstitute.com. Additional information about sports psychology and the topics discussed can be found there. Also, if you like what you see today, be sure to subscribe to this channel. And be sure to leave comments as I'm interested in what you think of these efforts. And as always, thank you so much for watching today.